you're teaching math, what exactly are the components that you put in your math program that work for you? Well, in today's video, I want to share with you the components that I include in my math program that help me to structure my math program from beginning to end. So there are four main components to my math program, and I want to walk you through each part and explain to you exactly how they all work and fit together. One of the biggest struggles I've had in my teaching career is always figuring out how to fit things together so that they just made sense. Instead of constantly pulling things this way and that way and trying to really figure out exactly how things are fitting together, I always look for opportunities to systematize what my program and what the structure of each lesson or each week's worth of lessons looks like to help keep things simple. When we know the plan, when we know what it is we are trying to fill, what framework we're trying to follow, it is a lot easier to put things together and to make it all work and to cover everything when we have a system to follow. So there are four main components to my math program. One is the teacher-directed portion of the math learning schedule. This is where you are doing teacher-directed, either modeled, shared type activities. You're using math talks, number strings, all of those activities and lessons that you do with teacher support. This could range anywhere from posing a question, having students follow, having them work in small groups to solve a question, sharing time, talking about math, having them walk you through their process, or even you modeling different strategies that a student would use when they are working independently. If we are using gradual release of responsibility, then all of this part in the teacher-directed lessons is going to be where we are doing a lot of the supporting and showing students what to do, helping them to understand their thinking and push them to that next step or stage in their mathematical understanding. Now, the second component that I use in my math classroom is math centers. Now, math centers are a really important time because it allows students to practice. Now, I want to have systems for math centers as well. I want to look at the achievement chart and look at the different domains that I want covered in these math center times. I use the acronym MATH. M-A-T-H. M stands for math on your own. This is where you're going to get a lot of knowledge and understanding portions completed. This could be practice activities, interesting activities that students are doing, rehearsing, repeating, reviewing, all of that can happen in math on your own. Then we have the application piece. In my years of experience of teaching math, one of the things I know is true is that students will often struggle with problem solving, whether it is real world problem solving, problem solving just in general, or even those simple problems that they encounter in math and really starting to think about what's happening. So in the A section of my math centers, it's apply your math learning. This can happen through problem-based activities where students can apply their thinking and application skills and take all of their math skills that they've been taught and apply it to solving these problems that they're encountering. In this section, I wanna make sure that I'm trying to replicate real life problems and not those problems that you arbitrarily have to solve out of say a math textbook that just seem out of context and not something you would actually do but I want to have real world math problems that students may encounter in everyday living that they need to be able to solve. They may not have all of the answers. They may have to figure some things out. I also want to include multi-step problems and getting students to really decode exactly what it is that they're supposed to be doing in math so they have a better understanding of what it is they're doing. So I will give them problems or math choice boards I will also give them different activities that they can solve in this section that allows them to really think a little bit more deeply. I want to give them open-ended tasks where maybe there's multiple correct answers so that students can really start using their thinking and their application skills in this section. So they have some pre-taught things that they've done in the teacher-directed section and the math centers is time for them to apply all those things they've learned and solve some problem-based math. 
Now we also have T in the math. Now this often will either stand for either technology time or time with teacher. And I will often switch back and forth between time with teacher and technology time, depending on what is happening, whether I want to have really four math centers where there's different activities for each of them, or I want to use that as an activity where they're coming to see me. And we'll get into what guided math is going to look like in just a second. So that T is a flexible time, depending on your students, your students' needs, and how much work and the workload they can manage in the week will determine whether or not that T is a fourth center or if it is just the time you have reserved in your rotations for those students to come to see you for guided math. The H is hands-on learning. I am a firm believer that students need to get down and dirty with their math, meaning that they need to be able to explore math concepts and use their math knowledge and be able to apply it. It means that math can be fun. They can have things that they can do in the classroom where they are building and solving things. STEM is a great opportunity for them to use their math skills and solve things. They can play games. They can really focus on that communication skill and be able to apply their math knowledge and also to communicate their thinking in a fun and engaging way. We want our students to love math. And I love that math centers are a great way to facilitate the application of their math skills, their knowledge in fun and interesting and intriguing ways that keep them engaged and inspired in what they're doing in mathematics classroom. What we're definitely trying to avoid in this system is the everyone doing the exact same thing and rote learning and just kill and drill practice every single day. There definitely is a time and a place for students to just know their facts, understand what is happening in math and just get it, but that's not always going to be exactly the same and it doesn't have to look boring when we are doing those type of activities. So again, the four centers I use follow the math acronym and they use math on your own, apply your math knowledge and hands-on learning. Now the third component is guided math. Now this is what I would fit in during that tea time in the math centers. And guided math is where I can sit and do some reteaching and small group instruction, just like we do in language arts, but except we're gonna do it in math. Now, I love doing this because having guided math is an opportunity for me, number one, to be collecting observational and conversational data on my students because I'm going to do a lot of observing. I'm gonna be asking them a lot of questions, asking them to show me things, show me what they're doing, have them solve something in front of me, help guide them when I see that they are making an error. I will watch their thinking process in action, make notes, give them guidance, give them some timely feedback right there in the moment. It's also an opportunity to reteach and reinforce some of the concepts that we were reviewing in the whole class teacher-directed learning section. We will have the time in guided math to go over those concepts and reteach. It's also really valuable to be able to spend that time with students with lagging skills and help to do some gap closing during this time and help to bridge where they are with where they need to be with some targeted instruction that is differentiated and individualized to meet groups of students' particular needs. I often like to structure my guided math at four different levels. So we have those that are really have advanced thinking, we want to have opportunities, not necessarily go to the next grade level, but have them to think really deeply into what they're doing. Inquiry questions are a great opportunity for this to have students think a little bit deeper or solve some perhaps more complex problems that they are ready for developmentally. It also gives an opportunity in other levels of guided math to reteach, reinforce, and assess where they are. You can review different concepts, get them to think a little bit more broadly, and also review some of the material and do some targeted reteaching. It also allows me opportunities to really understand where students are and look at those students that are struggling typically in math. They may get more support during a guided math time. It may not be equal. They might not have the same amount of teacher touch points in a week during their guided instruction because you might have more with your groups that need more of you. It's very much a triage method when you are looking at your guided math that you want to make sure that the time you are spending is proportionate to the student need during those guided times. So for 
the opportunities for students who may be struggling, they have more opportunities to have the teacher reteaching concepts and supporting them through those concepts that they may be finding difficult at that moment. It also allows you that if there are some pre skills that they needed before they're ready to do the work that you're doing currently, they can review those with you during guided math as well. So that is the third section. The fourth section is warm ups. I think warm ups are a key practice opportunity for students to have a quick opportunity to show what they know. It also provides a very valuable exit entry ticket for your students to be able to collect and assess. You don't necessarily need to collect it each and every day or each and every week, but it does give you an opportunity for students, number one, self-assess their learning and understand where they may be struggling, where they need help, because they're reviewing these lessons and learned concepts often in these daily warm-ups, and you can use them as assessment opportunities and kind of track how they're doing along the way. And while they're doing these warm-ups, it's as simple as walking around the classroom and checking to see who's doing a great job, who's on track, who understands what they're doing, and who may be struggling, who is avoiding, who might need some extra time reteaching or might need some extra support along the way. So I definitely am not necessarily collecting the warm-ups every day and marking them, but I am observing and looking and noting which students have gotten it, which students are struggling, and which students need a lot more support. I also really like self-assessment at this. We spend a lot of time talking about measuring their understanding of what it is they're doing and figuring out how comfortable they are feeling and talking about the journey of learning and what learning feels like, sometimes especially in math, that there are opportunities where students may be frustrated. They may wanna give up. Some of them start saying, I'm not good at math, they are saying often, I think I'm not good at math because they've had experiences where math is hard and they are looking for ways to move away from that. And they want to run away from math because they're finding it difficult. However, sometimes math is challenging and learning to persevere through that, recognizing it, understanding that there is gold at the end of the rainbow is an important learning skill that it's not going to be easy the first time, that it's going to be frustrating, it can be challenging, but we can persevere, use our problem solving skills and get through it. So teaching students to recognize where they are in that learning journey, and it's simply a step in the process of learning instead of, oh, I did, wasn't good at it today, so I can't go forward. These warm-ups provide a great opportunity for students to help self-assess engage exactly where they are in that learning journey and to be able to acknowledge, okay, I need help. I need support. I'm not getting it. I'm not understanding. So I need more support because I'm not there yet, but I know I can because this has happened in the past, you know, last unit, the last activity, I was in the same place and I was able to move past it and move beyond it. And that continual learning opportunity allows students to move on. And that's why I really like warm ups because it's a great opportunity, not only for you to assess, but also for students to self assess as well. So those are the four components of my math program. We have teacher directed activities, guided math opportunities, student math centers, as well as daily math warm ups. Hey, thanks so much for checking out my math video. Coming soon to math and learning is Ignited Math. Ignited Math is a full year math program for classrooms of grades three, four, five, and six that are covering Ontario curriculum. You are looking to level up your math program, but don't have the time it takes to prep and plan and do it all yourself then Ignited Math is for you. Check out the link in this video for more information on Ignited Math and how to sign up for a waitlist so you get exclusive deals when we're ready to launch.